When I was 27 years old, I left a very demanding job in management consulting for a job that was even more demanding, teaching. I went to teach 7th graders math in the New York City public schools. I like any teacher, I make quizzes and tests, I give homework assignments. When the work came back, I calculated grades. What struck me was the IQ was not the only difference between my best and my work students. Some of my strongest performers do not have stratospheric IQ scores. Some of my smarter kids were doing so well. And that got me thinking. The kinds of things you need to learn in seventh grade math sure the hard. Ratios, decimals, the area of parallel grain. But these concepts are not impossible. And I was firmly convinced that every one of my students could learn the material if they worked hard and long enough. After several more years of teaching, I came to the conclusion that what we need in education is a much better understanding of students and learning from a motivational perspective, from a psychological perspective. In education, the one thing we know how to manage the best is IQ. But what if doing well in school and in life depends on much more than your ability to learn quickly and easily? So I left the classroom and went to graduate school and become a psychologist. I started studying grits and I started studying kids and adults in all kinds of super challenging settings. And in every study, my question was, who is successful here and why? My research team and I went to West Point Military Academy. We tried to predict which cadet would stay in military training and which would drop out. We went to the National Spelling Bee and tried to predict which children would advance fast in competition. We studied rugged teachers working in rare turf neighborhoods, asking which teachers are still going to be here in teaching by the end of the school year. And of those, who will be the most effective and improving learning outcomes for the students. We partnered with private company asking which of the sales people are going to keep the jobs and who are going to earn the most money. In all those very different contexts, one characteristic emerged as a significant predictor of success. And the worst of social intelligence, it was good looks, physical health, and the worst of IQ, it was great. Great is passion and perseverance for a very long-term goals. Great is having stamina. Great is sticking with your future. Day in, day out, not just for a week, not just for a month, but for years. And working really hard to make that future a reality. Great is living life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. A few years ago, I started studying grit in the Chicago public schools. I asked thousands of high school juniors to take grit questionnaires, and then waited around more than a year to see who would graduate. Turns out that grit old kids were significantly more likely to graduate, even when I matched them on never characteristic I could measure. Things like family income, snow dives achievement test scores, even how safe kids felt when they were at school. So it's not just that West Point or National Spelling Bee, the great matters. It's also in school, especially for kids at risk for dropping out. To me, the most shocking thing about grit is how little we know, how little science knows about building it. Every day, parents and teachers ask me, how do I build grit in kids? What do I do to teach kids a solid work ethic? How do I keep them motivated for a long run? The honest answer is, I don't know. What I do know is that talent just makes you ready. I do show very clearly that there are many talented individuals who simply do not follow through on a commitment. In fact, in our data, grit is usually unrelated or even inversely related to measures of talent. So far, the best idea I've heard about building grit in kids is something called growth mindset. This is an idea developed at Stanford University by Carolyn Dweck, and it says the belief that the ability to learn is not fixed, and it can change with the effort. 
Dr. Drake can show that brain can read and learn about the brain, and how it changes and grows in response to challenge. They're much more likely to persevere when they fail because they don't believe that failure is a permanent condition. So growth mindset is great idea for building grit, but we need more. And that's where I'm going to end my remarks because that's where we are. That's the work that stands before us. We need to take our best ideas, our strongest intuition, and we need to test them. We need to measure whether we've been successful, and we have to be willing to fail, to be wrong, to start off again with lessons learned. In other words, we need to be greedy about getting our kids greedier. Thank you.